Hi, and welcome back to Grasses Crypto, where I like to teach people about crypto. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about Balticig. Some people have asked for this video, so here it is. This video is gonna cover what is Balticig, why is it different, the user benefits, how does it work, how to back up the Vault shares, backing it up is gonna be a little bit different, and the current status of the project, as well as the launch plan. As always, lots to cover, so let's get into it. First, what is Vaultic? In simple terms, it's a multi-factor authentication crypto wallet. So think of your two-factor authentication, you log into your bank and you're gonna get like a text message. That's the second point of authentication. Whereas with a crypto wallet, generally it's a single signature. So you just need to sign or put the password in to sign a transaction. Here, you're gonna need multiple authentication points, not just the one. From the docs, it says that Multisig is a multi-chain, multi-platform threshold signature vault that does not need any specialized hardware. In order to make Multisig, really two pieces have been combined. So we've got four chains, TSS Vault. This is the technology that secures all the, the crypto within ThorChain, And you combine that with the mobile front end. So why is Multisig different? It removes the risk of a single point of failure or a compromise risk. So either you've lost your seed phrase, uh, as an example, or it gets compromised and reduces the $5 wrench attack. And that's where someone comes up to your house and kind of threatens you with a $5 wrench or some other weapon and forces you to hand over your seed phrase or hand over your, your keys and stuff like that. And that's what I mean by compromise. And by doing that, by having multiple authentication points or multiple points for which require the signing, it distributes the risks over multiple devices. So you don't have that single point of failure. The membership or the authentication points can be changed seamlessly. So if you upgrade your phone or change one of the devices, lose it in a boating accident, as an example, the, the member set can be updated without having to go create a whole new wallet. And lastly, it uses tested technology. So this technology in the back end to hold the funds is the same as what's being used in ThorChain for many years. So what are the benefits here? It increases your self-custody security. Again, because you're using multiple devices, you don't have that single point of failure. It removes some of the risks associated with the hot wallets. Because with the hot wallets, you're connecting it online, then there's a chance that someone can get your private key. But because there is no actual private key and you need multiple devices to sign a transaction, it kind of doesn't matter. And a malicious actor would need to get the majority of your vault shares in order to sign a transaction. And we'll have a look what that means in a minute. Reduces the need for hardware wallets because people buy hardware wallets to increase their self-custody setup. But by spreading this risk over multiple devices and having multiple devices in the setup, you're increasing your self-custody so you don't need a hardware wallet as much. It's designed for cross-chain DEX interoperability. So it's not just a wallet, it's gonna be something that you can use for trading that connects to things like ThorChain, MayaChain, Chainflip, and so on. Lastly, it can be used on any device. You don't need to go out and buy anything special. You can just download it from the relevant app store and you're good to go. So how does VaultSig work? If you saw my crypto wallets and self-custody for beginners video, you would have seen an image like this. It's where we have a wallet and we have a private key in there and that indirectly creates addresses. So as an example, you've got the Bitcoin address, but it can also make all the other addresses like an Ethereum address, Solana address, so on and so forth. And this is backed up by a seed phrase here. So let's take that a step further and we look at how a normal single signature wallet works. So just like above, we've got the private key here and then that creates what's known as a public key. And this public key is what is used in order to create these addresses. These are hashed and encoded to create like a Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cosmos, Thorchain, Solana, like whatever address you can think of. And this is how all wallets work, whether it's gonna be a hardware wallet, an online wallet, key store, ledger, like whatever else, it all works the same. Then when you create a transaction, a wallet will create literally the transaction with the transaction data. So it's gonna have the public key, which is essentially the from address and the to address. So this is where you're gonna be sending the crypto to. 
Then the wallet uses the private key to sign this transaction data and this proves that this transaction has come from this private key. So this information is then combined and sent to a full node, which would be like a Bitcoin or Ethereum full node, and then that broadcasts it on the network. And that's how transactions are created, signed, and then sent. From there, it would be mined and then go onto a block and then that's how you get transactions seen on the blockchain. So looking at Vaultisig, instead of a single signature, they'll use a multi-signature setup. So here, the N represents the number of devices or the number in the total setup. And the M, this part here, represents the minimum number or the threshold, if you think of a threshold signature scheme, of devices required for the signing to occur. So here we have a two or three setup. So we need at least two out of the three devices to sign a transaction before a transaction can be authorized. So essentially we've got two authorization points um, where we have three total. So let's just pretend we've got three devices here in our two or three setup. We've got a phone, a tablet, and a laptop. We've got Vaultisig installed on each. Then when you go through to make a new wallet, you're gonna go through what's known as a magic key generation process. I've added the magic because it is kind of magic, where these devices all sync up and create vault shares on each of the device. And they kind of like combine through um, a magic process to create a public key. And I'm calling this a TSS public key just because it's created from this magic TSS key gen process. Once we have the public key, it's the same as before where we use the public key in order to create the addresses. And you can create whatever address for whatever chain that you want. So then when we go ahead and we look at the wallet, we have very much like what we had up here in this particular single SIG wallet, um, we have the public key, we have the addresses, but the difference is there's no private key. A private key is never generated. Now, these devices, these three devices, kind of in a way, are all apart or come together in order to form a virtual private key. But the private key, as I said, is never created. It can never be exposed. It can never be leaked because it never actually physically exists. So let's move on to signing a transaction and see how this is different. So we can use one of the devices to create the transaction data. And again, that's the same. Where are we sending it from? Where are we sending it to? Any of these devices can make it. So that gets inputted into this magic key signing ceremony. And then two out of the three devices come together and utilize these vault shares that were created in the previous step to sign a transaction to create this TSS signature. So essentially at least two out of these three devices or the vault shares need to combine in order to create this signature. And it's really whatever threshold you set up before, because you can have more complicated setups like a, a five of seven, a seven of nine or so on. Anyway, so the transaction data combined with the TSS signature is then combined and sent out to the full node, just like we'd talked about before. Bring it back to the documentation here. We have the Vaultisig documentation and we have the key generation process here that you can read more about. And that requires all the devices to be online and essentially to sync together in order to create the wallet. Then we have the key signing process and that's where you would need, you know, as an example, two out of the three devices to come together to sign a transaction. Let's just quickly talk about the reshare process, which allows you to change membership. And when I talk about membership, I'm talking about like these devices are in a set membership because that membership was set when we did the key gen process here. So let's just say your phone got lost, uh, you wanna upgrade, you wanna add or remove this particular device and, and maybe have a desktop you wanna add into here. You can go through the reshare process, which enables you to add or remove devices from this membership without having to create a whole new wallet. So you can keep all these addresses without going through the whole key gen process yet again. And as it says here on the docs, you can essentially upgrade or downgrade your setup or replace lost or non-responsive devices within your setup, which is a really cool feature. So how do you back up 
your vault shares. And when I say vault shares, I mean these things, which are specific to each device. Well, there's no seed phrase to back up, no like 12 or 24 words like you would have in a normal wallet. Using the app, you would download the vault shares, like per device, to the devices, understanding, like I said, each one is unique to each device. Then you want to save these shares on different devices. You don't want to put all your vault shares in one spot because then you're essentially reintroducing a single point of failure. If somebody got the minimum threshold of those vault shares, then they could put them together and sign transactions. So you don't want to do that. As it says it here on the docs, it's critical that individual shares never be stored together as a malicious party could potentially recombine the vault shares to access the vault. So don't back up more than one vault share on the same device, USB, cloud storage, or anything like that. And don't upload more than one on the same website. So where is VaultTC currently at? There's beta testing underway, obviously with real funds. This is real wallet that are people utilizing. And currently there's iOS and Android. Everything's open source and available here and you can download and install the latest iOS app as well as the Android app here. And I think some of these would be available on the relevant app stores. The smart contracts are currently being audited and it's these contracts here, the Solidity contracts, the, the ones for the Vault token and so on and so forth. And there's also one for the, that controls the whitelist that you can find in here. And coming up, uh, there's a trial launch using a meme token here with 0.003 ETH. There's a bit of more information here you can read. And this is to test the, the whole launch process, test the contracts and ensure that everything's working well before the three Ethereum or the, the maximum three Ethereum goes into the smart contract upon the launch, which I think is a good idea just to ensure everything's going to go well. And here we have the launch plan or the roadmap. So first is obviously we've got the beta testing going on. There's going to be Mac OS and Windows support added. Then the App Store listings with obviously the iOS and the Android devices being in there. And then, and they want to get them stabilized, ready to go for a, a proper version one release. And that's when the Vault token launch will happen. That's where people on the whitelist will be able to buy Vault token up to three Ethereum worth. Um, whilst the whitelist is closed, I hear there may be a couple of spots up for grabs whilst this process is ongoing. Expect that to happen uh, late July or early August. I mean, it might be after August. As you know, many things change in crypto. Um, and then we go along to the TSS upgrades. That's pretty cool. And we just move through the actual uh, roadmap here. Well, that's the video. For more information on Vaultiseek, you can check out their website as well as the docs that I've talked about here before. If you found the video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or questions, put them in the comments section below. I'd like to hear what you think of Vaultiseek, whether you think it's a good idea, whether you'll be thinking about changing your self-custody setup or not. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.